Civil Wars Part 1? What the heck? Yikes. Everyone, clear the streets! Get back in your homes! When I talked about petty squabbling the other day, I had no idea. Uncle, why did you bring your troops down from the north? Now yeah. that you've opened the southern portal, we need to protect it from people who would do the spirits harm. I can protect it. I need you for something more important. There is another portal in the north. Once you open it, spirits and man will be able to move freely between the north and the south. With both portals open, our tribes will be united again. The world will be united again. That's a pretty good pitch. <laughs> Uh, all right. Not sure I like all this militarization stuff, but bringing people together. All right. <sighs> I haven't felt this at peace since. Oh, it scared me. Well, looky here. Vacation Tenzin has finally decided Vacation to join Tenzin, us. Vacation Tenzin, trademark. Yes, he <laughs> has. And I've really enjoyed having you two around. Reminds me of all those great vacations we took as kids with Dad. Boomy and I weren't on those great vacations. Oof. What about the time he took us to Kiyoshi Island to ride the elephant koi? Nope. Nice throwback to episode three. Oh, remember Ember Island? Those amazing sand palaces we built on the beach? Smoothing out you the mean wrinkles. You built? We never saw the place. Sounds like they all need to go to Ember Island. <laughs> Morning, kids. <laughs> Morning, Uncle Boomy. Do you have a baby in there? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just aging. Where's your sister? Who? <laughs> about this tall. Janora, were you and Milo teasing your sister again? I don't know. Maybe. Yes. She ran away. Search and rescue missions are my specialty. What do you say we all go together? Bring Milo and Janora too. I love the kids so much. They're so great. I know these last few days have been very troubling. Troubling? Troubling is when I get that itchy rash that won't go away and Julie's not around to scratch it. This is shocking. Nay, sickening. But these kale cookies? Opposite. Remind me to get the recipe later. Poor Julie, damn. How long before he starts telling us what kind of cookies we can eat? Probably a couple of days. Rhetorical question, Julie. You gotta keep up. Not to mention, I've got a cargo ship full of halibut that's rotting thanks to this harbor lockdown. Who wants to buy a ship full of stinking fish? <laughs> Seriously, it's not rhetorical. I need to sell these fish. <laughs> Chief Unalak is here to help the South. He wants to show us how to restore balance with the spirits so they'll stop attacking. Hmm. It's an interesting moment for Korra, right? Like, I haven't really figured out her uncle yet, but I think Korra's falling victim a little bit. He kind of has her number. Like, he is giving Korra what she wants, and what she wants is to feel like she's capable and useful. He just threw her into this situation where she did this amazing thing, and then he's telling her she can be like this ultimate hero for the Water Tribe, right? Like, he's really like feeding into her her ideology in ways other people don't. Like everyone else is like, be patient, find balance. And this guy's like, you can save everyone. And I think unfortunately, sometimes when people make us feel good about ourselves, we're like much more willing to overlook their negative things. It's especially potent when someone does something to tap into your identity or the identity you want, because then you sort of see these people as like a peg holding you up in the person you want to be. And so you don't want to lose them. And so you're forced to rationalize certain behaviors that otherwise you would think were wrong for self-preservation. Sometimes I think we feel like if we say or think someone is good, that means we feel like we're stuck on their team and we have to condone everything they ever do. That's why there's such outrage when public figures do things that are wrong. By liking them somehow, people confer this sainthood on them that just doesn't exist. It's not real. You know, the truth is nobody's either good or bad. It's like they said in the last episode, with the spirits, they have they have both inside them. Everybody has both inside of them. I think it's worthwhile to be a little bit defensive about that, you know, about who you idolize. Everyone is flawed. And just because you really like someone or they make you feel really good, you know, it doesn't mean that they're above criticism or that they're doing the right thing. I mean, I think Korra is really putting on her blinders here to this. All Unalak is trying to do is make our tribes unified again. No, he wants That's control not all he's of trying our to do. wealth. My wealth. And I like my wealth. If Unalak doesn't pull his forces out, then we have no choice but to fight for our freedom. And my money. <laughs> Maybe you could speak with your uncle. Tell yeah. him how frustrated we all are. Right. Like, he's definitely overstepping, right? Like, I don't know much about this world, but there's no reason to embargo the ships to protect the spirits that I can see. There's a lot more at play here. Or at the very least, it's understandable why the Southern Water Tribe would feel this way. I will hate to leave this quaint tribe. Is that true, Eska? Of course not, Desna. I hold immense dislike for the South. Ah, 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 what was that? That was terrifying. Yes, dear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so, so funny. All right, Bolin, I believe in romantic optimism, but I think you gotta cut your losses here, dude. This is not working out. It's been really great getting to know you. <laughs> really. But you will be coming with me to the north. There, we will live the rest of our lives together in icy bliss. But Before will your coming. brother be there? That's really the question for me. I like you. Is your brother always there? That's kind of a thing. Listen, I don't want to live in icy bliss with Eska. I think you mispronounced Eska and Desna. Just break up with her. Break up with her? You could do that? Yeah. <laughs> Guys do it all the time. How? Just tell her you're not that into her anymore. Listen, if this is your first relationship, let me tell you exactly how to break up with someone, all right? You just avoid embarrassment by continuing to talk to them and say you're going to meet soon, but you don't meet, and then a whole summer passes, and you still haven't seen each other, and you haven't talked for two months, and then she asks you, are we still dating? And you say, I don't know, because you're too embarrassed to say you want to break up. You're just trying to annoy her into leaving you because you're too much of a spineless coward to just break up with her because that's what you are as a high school student. You know what I'm talking about. That sounds like your kind of thing. Don't cry. Welcome back, by the way. The next time you take a leave of absence, I'd like you to let me know. Right? We're worried about you. Ending a relationship is kind of like pulling off a blood-sucking leech. You just gotta rip it off and get it over with. Thanks, Mako. Whew. I'm lucky you're so good at breaking girls' hearts. <laughs> or you better watch out. <laughs> I understand why you brought your troops here, but I'm afraid it's sending the wrong message. Your father has been talking to you. What a thing to say. I am their chief. I'm uniting, not invading. You want to make your throne a little less sinister, my dude? You're just, like, sitting in the dark? If the Water Tribes were at war, the Dark Spirits would thrive off this negative energy, and the world would be thrown into a battle between spirits and man. How do we stop it? This is a war only the Avatar can prevent. See, he's playing her. Maybe Tenzin was right. Maybe I'm not ready to be the Avatar. Tenzin lacked faith in you, but I have no doubt you will become the most admired Avatar the world has ever known. Which is exactly Thank what she wants to hear. Yeah, that works. Who threw those? <laughs> Everyone calm down. You're all part of the same tribe. Start acting like it. Yeah, seriously. You're taking their side? We thought you were one of us. I'm not taking anyone's side. Hey! You are the worst avatar ever. That's a real thing too. People get upset. Sometimes, when you don't fit neatly into their paradigms, you know? Like, if you're not with us, you're against us, right? Which is just so not true. And people will use those tactics to paint you as a villain. They'll say they stand for this thing, and that thing is a good thing. And if you want to take a more neutral ground, they'll say you're against that thing, and that therefore you're evil. It's a tactic, you know? It's a tactic that works. It takes a lot of work and a lot of pain, I would say, to make room for complexity in your life. It forces you to strip away things that you hold as essential to your life and your worldview. Thankfully, I think a lot of people actually respond really well to that because it's not a common thing. So for some people, it's really refreshing when they realize like, oh, maybe there's more to it than that, you know? Because I think in some level we crave that. There's like this weird thing. I don't know if everyone feels this way, but I think most people do. We all have an innate sense for when we say things that are not quite true. We'll say them anyway, and we won't even be that aware of how we feel. But if you really think about it, if you start to pay attention to it, you'll know when like you say something that is not quite within your knowledge, you know? Like when you say something and it's something that you're just repeating or that you want to believe, but don't really have a lot of evidence for, or it's not something you've experienced, it feels differently coming out of your mouth. And I think the flip side of that is it feels good when you hear things that sound true. You're like, oh, but still there are some people who will be threatened by that because they've just built too much around the ideas that they have already. And complexity strips them of what they feel are essential characteristics, essential tools of their own lives. Why would Iki run off like this? Oh, it's probably my fault. Stop it, Tenzin. I wish I could be as good a father as dad was to us. Tenzin, your problem is you're exactly like Dad. He was so focused on mm. saving the world and doing his duty, don't laugh, that he never had time for us. And he was really hard on himself, too. Just like Tenzin. That's a really good point. He is a lot like Aang. It's funny when the show points things out to you, and you're like, oh yeah. He's also very doubtful of his abilities like Aang was, and somewhat self-deprecating, and sometimes lacking confidence. He very much is Aang's son, and Katara's son. Hmm. You seem to have some grandiose delusion that we had a perfect, happy-go-lucky childhood. Guess what? We didn't. We need to keep moving if we want to find Iki before dark. Classic airbender technique. 
cutting and running when things get tough. <laughs> oh, come yeah. on. That's mean. Did Dad teach you that move? <laughs> They're being so hard on him, damn. Going back to what I was saying in one of the other episodes about how Tenzin, he takes responsibility for things. It seems like he's trying to prop up his whole family in his mind. Like it's his job to do that. How was your day, sweetie? My tribe's about to go to war and I'm supposed to stop it. But will anyone listen to me? And I didn't ask for my father's help. Can't he just let me be the Avatar? Do you want advice or am I just supposed to listen? Mago just stepping around the minefield. How about you take a break from all this Avatar stuff and we go out for a quiet dinner? <laughs> Isn't this fun, huh? We never get to spend enough time together. Did you call this a double date? Five of us. Right. So fun. Excuse us while we retrieve more sustenance. You guys gotta save me. I thought you were breaking up with her. What happened to ripping off Breaking the up leech? with them. I tried, but anytime I bring up the subject, she threatens to freeze me in a block of ice and feed me to dolphin piranhas. So it was more like you tugged at the leech. Yes, over and over and over, but it won't come <laughs> off. I haven't said this, but I've been thinking about it a lot. He's such a good actor. I don't know who it is. The person who does bowling. I'm very bad at reading people. You should know that by now. Oh, do something, <laughs> Avatar. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of a certain I love it. I, I love how, like, all these responsibilities are pressing on her. But, yeah, number one on her list. Definitely going to be helping Bolin break up with his girlfriend and her brother. Boomy, it's pitch black and the rocks are slippery. You're going to hurt yourself. If I can do it, it should be no problem for a couple of benders. Fine. Okay. Now I get it. You were right, Boomy. That was faster. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tenzin's the funny guy now. Look, if you can dish it out, you better be able to take it. I've got everything under control. Whoops. <laughs> Boomy! He'll, he'll be all right. Unalak told me everything. How Dad and Tenzin kept me trapped down here while I trained. How Dad got banished from the North. All I ever wanted to be was the Avatar. But everyone keeps holding me back, even my own parents. Unalak's the only one who believes in me. <laughs> no. That's not true, Korra. Problems between the North and the South started long before you were born. You can't expect to undo them in a day. So I should just sit back and let the Water Tribes go to war? I'm sad to say I relate to Korra a lot here, actually. She's worked herself up into a state of really high anxiety, and she doesn't know how to deal with it, and she's used to other people helping her, and nobody can help her, and so she's getting frustrated. So I don't want to be influenced by the, the comments that much, but I have noticed that a lot of people say that Korra is really annoying in this season. I'm starting to see why that is, but I, I don't think that makes her not likable. Kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, I think you can like Korra and still not like her action, especially if you can understand where it's coming from. And it just seems to me like it's coming from stress and pressure and not knowing how to resolve it. You know, things kind of get to a boiling point when you get stuck on an issue for a long time or you feel pressure mounting and you're supposed to handle it and you have no idea how to handle it so your instinct is to look for people who have always been your guardians or people who have been there for you but there comes a point where they can't help you anymore because you've moved past them in certain ways so she's looking to authority figures or people that she likes to lean on to solve her problems and they can't and that makes her resentful so for example she leans on mako as her boyfriend but what does he know about being the avatar nothing she looks to tenzin but tenzin isn't really all there yet in terms of being like a, a real master he has his own issues he's working out right now now Either if her parents know anything about being the Avatar, there's nowhere for her to turn except for Unilock, who's like, you're doing a great job. So even though we don't like this behavior, right? Like we don't like seeing her lash out at her parents or Mako, it's still understandable, at least to me. I don't know, but I don't want you getting caught in the middle of it. It's too late, mom. I'm already in the middle of it. See, she's pouting. And pouting is something you do when you want attention, when you want help. I relate to this very strongly. And one thing I can say I think helps with this is it's a downward spiral once you are in a negative emotional state and you start seeking help to fix your emotional state. There's something powerful about just accepting that it's in your hands and that nobody can save you from it. Weirdly, once you do that, it becomes so much easier. It like focuses your energy in a way that you can actually confront things head on. So I think she has to shift the focus that she is the only one who can decide what to do for herself. She can still lean on people for other things, but they have to be things those people are able to do. Like Mako definitely can give her affection and her mother definitely can give her unconditional love as a parent, but neither of them can solve the Avatar problems. So she just has to decide to deal with it. We can still avoid a war. No, you can't. That was cool. <laughs> I like this a lot. It's good. Rope bending. Who are you? 
You're still trying to prove you can do everything a bender can. Well, you can't. Deal with it. And you're not our mother. You don't get to tell me what I can and can't do. Deal with that. <laughs> Good luck healing yourself. You're the oldest of us, but you always acted like the youngest. I had to become the responsible one. I knew it. I was the only one who packed up and moved my whole life to be with her. Sure, after years of flitting around the world trying to find yourself, it was time for you to settle down somewhere. Ouch, I feel attacked. You think you're some savior who has to carry on dad's legacy. What are the genetic rules of this? Like, Kaio could have airbending kids. Oh no, but is it like a recessive gene? <laughs> has anyone out there figured out bending genetics? I'll keep looking out here. Fine. 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 I'm sorry for thinking you had anything to do with the rebels. I'm the one who should apologize. I never should have held you back. Wow. You are under arrest and will stand trial for conspiring to assassinate me. This guy. Wow. Lots of drama in the Water Tribe. I have already talked a tremendous amount in this episode, so I'll just say thank you guys for watching and I'll see you for episode four.